This is the Red Beard Podcast. Hold on to your butt. Do we really suck? Or is this guy really that good? I have one speed, I have one gear. Go! Hey everybody and welcome to the Red Beard Podcast. Uh, this is Cooley. Um, it's a pretty sad day um, on Red Beard Podcast because, uh, well... We all know Tony is, uh, you know, into the supernatural and, you know, he loves weird things and stuff. And, and well, uh, ironically, um, the cruise ship that he and Becca were on has actually vanished um, without a trace. Uh, they did, from what I understand, they were somewhere around where the Bermuda Triangle would be. But uh, I'm not into this shit, so I am not the person to investigate this. Uh, but I'm, I mean, now I am a believer and I'm, this is Tony. Um, so now I am, what up everybody? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how long we're going to keep that shit going. No, no, I was waiting for you to come in. I was like, (laughs) no, you're you're getting really creative with it. I was like, I'm just going to let you keep going, man. (laughs) That's a really sad day. Jesus Christ. I thought you were just going to say I was still on my cruise, but you got like super dark with it. I mean, yeah, who goes on a cruise for like more than a week, right? Like, I did because oh. that's how I roll. Word. Yeah, it was like it was like a week and a day. It was, dude, it was awesome. So, uh, but I am I'm glad to be back uh, on Red Beard Podcast. You know, definitely, man. This is the show. This is the place to be on Friday. Uh, glad you guys are listening. Um, let me let me tell you a little bit about the cruise first. Talk why don't, about why don't it. we do that? Talk about it, brother. Talk about it. Preach. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I went on my honeymoon. It was phenomenal for those of you that give a shit. And, um, it was, it was great. I went, uh, we, you know, we flew down to, uh, Fort Lauderdale, um, you know, took a shuttle over to Miami and got on the Norwegian escape, which is the biggest, uh, ship that Norwegian cruise line has made. Um, it, it's the newest ship. Um, it holds up to like 4,300 people. Um, it has an amazing pool area, multiple decks. It's got, you know, like the, the, it's the biggest ship. So there are balconies that are on like the 17th floor. So it, it was an insane, an insane trip. We went to St. Thomas, uh, we went to Tortola and we went to, um, Nassau and went to Atlantis. So it was a great time, all inclusive, got the drink package, Definitely got my money's worth out of that. Uh, me and my, my new wife, um, you know, definitely had a, a great time. Uh, and if I am going to convince anyone to go on a cruise, um, you should definitely go Norwegian because I've done the carnival thing and, and I did the carnival. I took advantage of carnival after they had their massive uh, failure um, and uh, no one wanted to to take carnival cruises. So I was smart about it and got a carnival cruise for like 500 bucks and like went to Cozumel and Key West and it was a no brainer. And obviously that didn't happen. Um, and it was great, but Norwegian does something called freestyle cruising where you don't have to necessarily sit at a table. Like, like on a lot of cruises, you'll go on dinner or you go to dinner and you have to sit at an assigned table, like in whatever restaurant you go to. Norwegian doesn't do that. It's like freestyle cruising. You show up and you're like, you go to whatever restaurant you want. If you go to the same restaurant more than once, you'll sit in a different table. Um, They have, um, they don't have like a captain's dinner, like a formal night. They have nights that you can dress up and people will take professional pictures of you, but you can, you don't have to, you don't want to. And we didn't, we just kind of like went to dinner in shorts and t-shirts and rocked out and it was fucking awesome. Um, And dude, we had it. And you know this because you, you went on a cruise, Yeah, but um, recently, recently, and and you went on the on the new kids cruise, which I, I will say it's this is be different. Well, it is, but in the same time, you'll understand what I'm about, what I'm about to say, it, dude. It, it sometimes it's like it's it's at night, it's completely dark out, and you can't see anything around you. Yeah, you, but you are literally like music is blasting. It's a fucking party in the middle of the ocean. Yes. <laughs> like it really is amazing, you know. Yep. Like it. So it is. It is. Um. If you guys out there have never been on a cruise. You owe it to yourself to, to do it. Um, and if you're going to go, just, just go big or go home because it, it, go all in. You know, spend some money on it. You won't regret it. it you know, it, it really is a, it, it was a great time. And that's all I got to say. And it was, it was fucking amazing. And, I mean, while it's not as exciting as the Bermuda Triangle, I mean, there was some supernatural crap that happened on that boat, wasn't there? Was there? What did I? What did I? Oh, I, the, you for you, right? No, that you met. That I met. What did I say? You actually what? took a picture with this guy. 
I took a picture with this guy. Who did I take? Jesus a Christ, man! What the fuck? This, this was the perfect freaking segue. I don't know. For dude. What you? It's one of the only things that you texted me while you were on your cruise. Come on. Oh shit! You're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I. <laughs> it yeah. was the perfect segue. Ah, uh, no, you're right, man. I'm sorry. I fucked that up. I, I, yeah, but I was like, it wasn't like, I don't know. I guess it's supernatural now, but like when I was on the boat, it was <laughs> obviously wasn't. <laughs> I'm like, did I have a ghost experience? Was I too drunk <laughs> that I don't remember? No. So, um, I'm like, I took a picture with a poltergeist. Why don't I remember this? No. Uh, so I, this is all right. This is hilarious. So we're on, we're on the cruise and like before I had actually got out of range of being able to text people, the, 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 the cruise director it just looked so familiar to me. And I right away, I said to Becca, I was like, Becca, this fucking guy looks like Lucifer. <laughs> like the, <laughs> the Tom Ellis, the guy who plays Lucifer in the show Lucifer. And, I, and, and it was funny because I didn't tell you this, but um, the, you know, we're, we keep seeing him on TV. And, we, and he, he walked in. To, we went to see a, um, uh, what the hell was it, a um, hypnotist one night. And he came out at the end and... He was, you know, they hypnotized somebody and they said, you won't be able to get out of your seat until the cruise director, Silas, comes over and shakes your hand. So these people literally could not get out of their seats. And then he came over and shook their hand. They were able to stand up. So I'm taking pictures of him and I'm like, he looks exactly like Lucifer. And in every episode of Lucifer, Lucifer wears a suit, you know, and he's got dark hair and the beard. And this guy looked exactly like him. So I think it was like two days later. Um, he's walking around the cruise ship and I see him and I go up to him and I put my hand out. I was like, how's it going? He wasn't British, but I was like, I was like, nice to meet you. I was like, um, you know, just want to let you know, me and my wife are on our honeymoon. We're having a great time. Like you're knocking it out of the park. This is an amazing ship. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for making this experience, you know, unforgettable. This, this is a great. And he's like, and he's like, Oh, thanks a lot. I'm glad you guys are having a good time. He's like, congratulations on your honeymoon, you know, whatever. And then I go, and I, I got to tell you this. I was like, because I, I've been thinking about it since I saw you as, as the cruise director. I was like, you have a, has anybody ever told you that you like Tom Ellis? And he was like, I don't know who that is. And I was like, have you ever heard of the show Lucifer? And he was like, I was like, I know that's like a weird name to throw out. I was like, but have you seen the show Lucifer? He's like, I've heard of it, but I, I've never seen it. And I said, well, look up Tom Ellis, Lucifer. I was like, your resemblance to him is uncanny. Like right. I really, I, every time I see you, that's the first thing I think of. And he was like, oh, and he went into his phone and he went into the notes app and he was like, what's his name? Tom Ellis. He goes, I'm going to Google that. I'll make it back to my room. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so later that night, uh, there was an eighties party and, uh, you know, on the top of the ship and he's wearing like a mullet wig that he brought out. And it was him and I just literally, like, I went up to him. I was like, yeah, I was like, what's up Lucifer. <laughs> and, he like, and he like took a picture with me and he was like, yeah, but like, he was a cool guy. Um, I'll, I'll post the picture. You guys will have to see it. It was, he looks exactly like the guy, but anyway, nice. So man, yeah. Nice. So, uh, so before we started this, man, I showed you, uh, the first four minutes of preacher, which, uh, AMC oh was God. kind enough to post for all of us. Uh, so we could actually watch it before and get. And into it was the, not uh, leaked. Yeah, right. it wasn't yeah. leaked. They posted it so that we can like watch it and get excited for the show. And man, I am freaking pumped for this show. Hell yeah! Uh, I have a little bit more of a connection to it than you might, uh, but I know there are a lot of fans out there of Garth Ennis's work and Steve Dillon, uh, who actually put together the comic book series. It was a sixty. I think it was like a sixty-six ep- uh, issue series, and um, you know it, it's. It's awesome. It has a beginning, middle, end. So I don't know what they're going to do with the show. If it's popular, they might end up extending it and like you know trying to throw more into it. But uh, man, I, I'm just pumped, man. It looks like they're going to get it right. It looks really awesome. It looks like they're not pulling any punches. I mean, what did you think of the first four minutes, man? Well, the first four minutes kind of was was really just like high end, like energy. I didn't expect the first four minutes to throw that many punches. Mm-hmm. I really did. You know, like you. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it, we're going to talk about it. So, I mean, the, the dude at the beginning, like I, I thought he was actually going to be possessed when that thing flew in, Yeah. but I didn't expect him to fucking explode. Right. Like that was like, holy shit. You know, like that kind of blew me away. Um, and I think they'll end up explaining that, but the, uh, but then it cut to him and just the dude as the preacher. I mean, like he's just got a, uh, he's just has a badass presence about him. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of like where he comes in and, and what his mission is, because I never read the preacher comic books, although I knew they were out there because I, um, when I used, you know, obviously again, when I used to, uh, go into comic book stores and look for, uh, you know, predator comic books, predator was always before or after preacher. 
you know, because it was, you know, PRE. So I always right. saw, I always saw these preacher comic books, but I never got into them. Uh, but now that there's a show about them, it only makes me want to read the comic books even more. Uh, because it just seems like it's got to be a good story if they've brought it to AMC. Because AMC doesn't, you know, toss out shit. And I think that we're all aware of that with Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead. Although I have not watched Fear the Walking Dead because I just, for some reason, cannot get into the second season. It is just not dragging me in. Um, but I, I will say, I mean, th- this first four minutes kept my attention the entire time. Um, you know, and it actually threw some laughs out too, you know, which I thought I didn't expect. Um, I have a twisted sense of humor. So I found <laughs> like when the guy exploded, I laughed. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Cause it was like so unexpected. It was like, it was literally like somebody tripping and falling. Yeah. He was like, I am the prophet. And then he just blew up. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Cause cool. you're like, oh, you're the prophet. That's going to be all the, but whoa, what the fuck yeah. just happened? <laughs> oh, now I have AIDS cause there's blood on me. It was just like, I don't know. It was just, it was creepy, man. It was creepy. It was, uh, it, it was good though. You know, it's, it really kept my attention. I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Um, from what you saw in the first four minutes, and I know that you're, you're, you read preacher, yeah. but was there anything like, did everything in the trailer make sense or from what you saw, have they already changed things? Oh, they've already changed things. Really? I don't want to like, they've already changed things, but they've already given us something from the book. You know what I mean? Like it's like you can, it's it's very true to the source, but not like verbatim. Verbatim. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're 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 rewriting it. They you can tell that they're making the changes that they need to make to make it fit. Uh, you know, and like for today's audience. Uh, so you but, don't think that? So you don't think that like the original story would have worked today? I think the original story definitely would have worked today, but it wouldn't have worked on network television. Okay. Right. All right. So I mean, well, why being, though? Like, what about it? Like, well, it's it's without going too much into it, but and like, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I, I look. This book came out in 1995. Yeah. Okay. Right. This is uh, 11 years ago. Those people that don't know the book, there's a lot out there that don't. I mean, I've had to like actually introduce people to this uh, at, at a very late stage in the game. Uh, and then there's still people today, like when I'm like, Hey, you're going to watch preacher when it comes out. Well, what's that all about? And it's like, dude, it's based on a comic. Really? And it's like, yeah, really? <laughs> like yeah, this, yeah. and it's one of the most popular comic books out there. Like, I mean, it's, ch- it, it's one of those things like Watchmen that actually changed the face of what comic books are, uh, today. But, um, with that being the case, the fact that it's out in 1995, it's really hard for me to say to myself, Oh, I need to avoid spoilers, right? Yeah, yeah. But well, it's been out there. You're gonna talk about it. Talk about it. But I, I, I don't, I'm not going to because I know there are certain things that you know are essential to the story. That hey, you don't want to spoil for people. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's that, stuff that, that we, there is stuff that we saw in that first four minutes that, like, I could totally like you know pull apart and like tell you like, hey, this is this is what's gonna happen. This is what we saw. This is what that was. This is. You know what I mean? But I, I'm not going to because it's just – I think it's too – I think it's just too much to give away. And I think they're really going to try to build up to that and really reveal things for people. And I want to keep that surprise alive. But no, I mean, they that are, makes sense. Yeah. There are really a, a – there's not a ton, but there are a few, like, really big Easter eggs, I would call them, that, okay. you know, if you if you are a comic book fan, watch the first four minutes. You'll see what I'm talking about and, you know – Definitely watch the series. You know who's directing that, right? Seth Rogen. Are you serious? Yeah. The first episode of the season. No, the season they wrote Seth and directed. Seth Rogen. It. Yeah, they are the they are responsible for bringing Pe- Preacher to AMC. Is he like a fan of the of the comic book? Then, like, what, oh yeah, what? huge fan. Uh, Seth Rogen and him and the dude and I can't remember the guy's name. I don't know his name. What, what, the, the dude uh, from but the what? dude the dude that wrote uh, this is the end with him. Oh, uh, um, well, there's James Franco. He wasn't in it, but it was um, the skinny kid. I, I can't remember who it is. All right. Well, anyway, Look it up. anyway yeah, but, but that's but yeah, no him, shit. Those two guys are actually uh, responsible for bringing it to AMC, and they're actually talking about bringing The Boys, which is another Garth Ennis product, to um, – I think they're talking about bringing it to Showtime or Cinemax. I can't remember remember dude that literally like that you literally just blew my mind i would have yeah. never in a million years guessed seth rogan was behind this when they announced it years ago like i had no freaking clue what when i was like what? so so he's already been so shit. so he's already been involved with this for 
Yeah, for a, for a little over a year. Oh, Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen? Yes. Okay, yeah. Holy shit. Well, he only directed, it says one episode. Directed one episode, but... But responsible for bringing it to AMC. Produ- they're, they're producing the entire series. Like that's, it's, They're writing and producing the entire series. The first episode is directed by them, and then the rest of it is uh, directed by different people. Well, dude, I'll tell you one thing right now, man. If they directed that first episode, that totally changes my whole perception of Seth Rogen because that is not like him at all. Yeah. That's, ama- that's awesome. But, I mean, then again, they did some dark shit, and this is the end with, yeah. a, with a comedic twist. But I feel like if you take out the comedy, it's still dark as shit. Yeah, that, uh, so. the, uh, one of the dudes that wrote um, Breaking Bad and directed an episode, a few episodes of Breaking Bad is actually going to be doing some, one of the shows or one of the episodes of That's Preacher cool. as well. I could see that, though. I could yeah. see that because uh, I know that um, uh, Breaking Bad, I mean, you had um, Vince Gilligan, which was he was brilliant. But also what I like about uh, AMC is that they allow – well, I mean, you have to have some sort of vision for this and you have to be somewhat qualified, but they have a lot of their actors – you actually direct the episodes like Brian Cranston directed some of the best episodes of Breaking Bad. Right. You know, so uh, and that just goes to show like I think it was the episode where he uh, did you ever you watch the series, right? Yeah. The series where it was it was in the last season. I think it was like one of the last episodes where he went off on Skylar on the phone Mm -hmm. and like made her think like that. He was remember. Remember that episode? That was him. Like that whole episode was him. And that was one of the best episodes. Like as far as his acting went, I thought was like amazing. He uh, directed that episode, and a lot of the episodes that I was like, oh, this was a great episode, Brian Cranston. You know, um, the one where, um, you know, the twins actually blow up that car and, like, walk away or whatever? Yeah. Brian Cranston. Like, he definitely went all out for some of these episodes. So I, I, I love the fact that Seth Rogen is, is directing this and that Evan Goldberg. That's awesome, man. I can't wait to see the rest of the series. I'm totally in now. Yeah, and then uh, June 3rd. Uh, just as an aside, uh, Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead, yeah. also created another comic book called Outcast, mm-hmm. and uh, that is going to be premiering on Cinemax on June 3rd. That is uh, something that you would probably be into. It's a uh, it's demonic about demonic possession. Oh hell yeah, uh, man! I'm all in that and, yeah. and exorcism and and stuff like that. When and is that? June 3rd. June 3rd. Yeah. Um, I'm watching that and it and it follows the uh story of a young man who actually was possessed and was able to you know be exercised Mm -hmm. and you know the guy's still alive yeah he's still alive and people are uh, actually and like the demons or whatever are actually coming after him um and he's actually going around and trying to help people the way that he was helped Mm-hmm. So it's a it's it's a pretty cool story. I've read like the first six issues of the comic. Haven't really gotten uh, around to getting to the rest of them, but it's an awesome comic book. Uh, Kirkman has a really uh, great way with words mm-hmm. and uh, dialogue and stuff like that, and actually Obviously. making characters I mean, interesting. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, you, as also jumping into Robert Kirkman, um, he's actually um, going to launch a comic book documentary series on AMC as well, which I posted yeah, I'm, on. I'm looking forward to that. This uh, right here is really cool. It's called uh, Heroes and Villains. So. Um, it just says right here, uh, I'm reading the article that I posted. AMC is partnering with The Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman and his producing partner David Alpert to create a comic book documentary series. The network announced on Tuesday, Heroes and Villains, the history of comic books, will be a six-part, one-hour documentary series that explores the stories, people, and events that have transformed the world, transformed the world of comic books. I think that's great. You know, Even for people that are not comic book fans, this is kind of going to give them a glimpse into what that world is and, and, and just how these stories and these, and these uh, amazing comic books come out. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's like the world, the other world that people are not aware of. I mean, like you go to the store and you buy comic books. This is the process. This is how these stories you created and this is how they come to fruition. So I think that's a really cool series for him to do, especially right now while he's in the limelight. Mm-hmm. You know, why not? You know, why not put that? I think that's, I think that'd be a nice parallel to comic book men too. You know, right. you see like, like why these comic books are worth so much and the rare shit that's out there. And this is why this stuff is so rare and where they come from. Yeah. So, and, and it's like, so, so just as a, as an aside here, like those comics that are worth money. And this is the thing. People don't realize this. The comics that are worth money, the stuff that you're, you're actually going to get that's like, you know, going to blow up and become like worth thousands of dollars. Uh, are books that didn't really see a high print run mm. um, and books that people didn't take care of. So back, you know, when comic books were like actually in their infancy, 
uh, people didn't really collect comics. They just got them, read them, and threw them out, you know, or traded them, uh, gave gave them away to friends, stuff like that. And you know, then there were like scores of comics that like moms like threw out when they were like cleaning up house and stuff like that, and like that left very few copies out there. So those are the comics that you see uh, that you see now that are like fifteen thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars, a couple of million dollars for like the first appearances of like these these major characters that you just can't get. Um the the reason why there's so much is because you can't find them anywhere. Right. You know what I mean? And then recently the recent ones that are like, you know, you can find that are like really, you know, big time issues like The Walking Dead number one uh are are issues that came out that didn't really have high print runs mm -hmm. because image for a long time and i'm not sure if they still do this but for a long time they were only like print to order so like you know they would only print as many copies as were ordered by the comic book shop and if the comic book shop didn't expect it to be a huge seller they would order very little uh so people so usually like comic book shops will only order as many as they get subscribers for and then maybe get like 10 or 15 more copies and put them on the shelf um, so what happens is that people that don't really know about it, right. And it passes them by and it comes out with a show that becomes the number one show on television, you know, six years later. Now you have a book that everybody wants to get because they want that first appearance, that first, that first issue that came out. And now you just can't get your hands on it. And now it's just worth money. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so there's a lot that goes into a comic book becoming worth money. And then you know, you have the speculators market, which actually crushes any chance of a comic book being worth anything because you get tons of people that just snap up everything and buy like, you know, five copies of each issue and throw them in bags and boards, never look at them, never put a fingerprint on them and just box them up and put them away. So there's really nothing out there that you can really like guess this is going to be worth money. But I do recommend most image comics like number ones, grab them up, man, because most of them are being snapped up by like these uh you know, these television studios and these uh, movie studios and actually becoming major properties. Well, people are going to make a lot of money off of them. I mean, there's I remember when I used to go to comic book shops and I would actually get the book that would tell you how much everything was worth. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like street or wizard yeah, as wizard. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, there was one comic book that I had at the time and I forget what it was. I still have it. It's like when I found out I had it, I put it in plastic and wrapped the shit out of it. It's like, it's yeah. like it's sealed, yeah. right? This thing at the time was worth like $500. And that was, that was almost 10, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was some version of the Hulk. I don't know what it was, but, or something that I had, it was rare. It must've been, uh, the first Wolverine. Maybe. I, I honestly don't remember. I literally like, I, I went through, like, I was so at the time I was very into it and I got all, I, I got all my comic books. It took me about a couple of weeks, actually, but I went through and I, you know, cataloged everything that I had and I found this one and I looked it up and it was it was worth money and I sealed the shit out of it. Um, so, dude, there was a time when I actually went to the comic book store or to um, remember KB Toys. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. KB Toys. I went to KB Toys, man, and they they were selling all this like uh, all these figurines. There were Predator like figurines that I wanted and um that actually, you show me a picture of it. That might be it. I have to. I have to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. The Incredible Hulk 181. Yeah. That. That's the. Yeah. That might be it. But uh, I will say, I, I went in and I used to go into the toy stores, and I was so like, you know, that was at the time I realized, like, oh, if you take it out of the packages, you know, the value decreases and all this stuff. So I would buy double of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I would take one out to play with, and the other one to actually. Yeah, like, and see that like that behavior, right, mm. is is exactly what kills the value of anything. Mm. Right. So people it's funny because people do that to get something that's worth money and that's that's valuable. But more but people buy it and it becomes less rare. Right? Not not only do more people buy it, but more people buy like two. Two. Yeah. Or three or four. And instead of playing with it, they keep it sealed in the package. And yeah. the thing that makes it valuable is when people buy one, open it, play with it, and then all the ones that like are sealed in the package are like hard to find. You can't find them yeah. anymore because everything has been opened and played with. The thing, the stuff that I have that I don't think is worth a lot of money, but it's worth a lot to me in my head mm -hmm. <laughs> is I have like figurines, dude, that are in bags and stuff that like I haven't touched in years, f like masters of the universe. Right. Like, dude, I have like original He-Man characters that, yeah, I played with, but they're still in good condition. I have, 
I have uh, Castle Grayskull. I still have Castle Grayskull. I have um, Snake Mountain. Right. I have all these things that like people can't find anymore. But then it's like I go to like uh, the Toy Vault and there's like three of them. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and then it's like they're selling them for like – but they're selling them for like 50 bucks, 40 yeah. bucks. I'm like, all right, well, that makes me feel a little better. It's not like it's not like 10 grand, but, you know, it's worth something. It's worth – more than I bought it for at the time. Correct. Or, you know, and 50 bucks for a He-Man character, like, that's 50 bucks to something I yeah. got. But again, that's He-Man. That's He-Man, yeah. When back in the day, people opened people up the, opened up the package and played yeah. with them. My yeah. He-Man figures are messed the fuck up. Yeah. Like, they're just like, the paint's chipped off. The, I mean, yeah. like, you look at it, like, you know that I played with them. Uh, I chewed on some of them because, like, I that's the you kind of kid teething? that I was. What the fuck was yeah, going on? I don't know. That's, how, that's what I did, man. I <laughs> chewed on everything. Christ. I just... It's like, huh, I wonder what this tastes like. Ah. All right. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's just. Anyway. <laughs> that's just what I did. No, I cool. bite the thumbs off that motherfucker. It's like, ah. Oh, um, but, uh, but yeah, like that's, that's what devalues something is like when you keep it in the package, you buy two or three of them. And then like two of them are in the package. One's played with. Um, and I think it's, it's funny because I used to collect. Everything is in bags and boards. I still kind of collect some things if I know that it's like – if I know that that particular thing has a low print run, I'll uh, I'll be very careful with it or whatever. But now when I buy comics, I don't buy comics because I want to collect them or I want to make money in the future. I want to buy comics because I want the creators that actually you know put their heart and soul into creating that thing. Uh, I buy them because I want them to actually make money, and I want them to keep making comics. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because like if you stop buying them, they're not going to make them anymore because that's that's the business. Right, right, right. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that's the only reason why I buy now is because I want them to keep coming. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it makes sense. Um, you know, I I definitely uh, agree with you. I mean, I I don't buy as much comics as I used to, but. Um, Man, like there are times I'll go into a comic book store and I'll go in like a binge and I'll buy like six just because it's like, oh, I haven't been in here in so long. Right. You know, and I I, I definitely don't want to, um, you know, like uh, downloading them is great, but I, I don't want to necessarily like torrent them. Um, some people do that and I get it. Like I get that some people do that. For me, it's it's more of like wanting to give the artist like the, the credit, you know, like what was it? Witches. Um, yeah, you, you actually gave me a copy of witches, but like it was, you know, you had gotten it. So I, right. you know, borrowed it. And I think Don actually ended up downloading like the entire like witches series because he was into it and he thought it was amazing. Right. You know? So, I mean, I love giving the artists like the money because dude, to illustrate a comic book, that's not easy. That takes a lot of time. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's not something people pump out in like, you know, a couple of days. It takes them months to draw one comic book. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a lot of work. And, yeah, you know, you blow through it in, like, a, an hour or two, a couple hours. But that's a lot of work for the – everything you see was done by somebody. It's it's a, it's amazing. Right. Um, but I, I do want to move on to something that um, I, I'm sure that some of you out there watch this show. And, and I think my uh, wife just finished watching it, which was The Blacklist uh, that is, is on NBC. Um you don't watch the blacklist. You're not a big fan. No, I read the blacklist. You okay? So, um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's, that makes no sense. But uh, well, I, I read it last night. I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. I know what's going on. I yeah. know what's up. So, um, I I definitely um, she's alive. Yeah, she is alive. Um, <laughs> she is. She's alive. Uh, I called it. I knew that she was alive. And the reason why is this. And I am so proud of myself because I fucking nailed the way that she was alive. Yeah, because so, they slowed her heart rate. Yes. And yeah. I said that shit. And it's exactly what happened in Romeo and Juliet where, like, she they, she went to the apothecary and took some shit and slowed down her heart rate. So people thought she was dead. And then she woke up in the in the thing. And then, and then you know, Romeo's – Romeo. Romeo, like, sees Tom. her and he's like – yeah, or DiCaprio. He sees, he's, <laughs> if you want to go there, he sees her when she wakes up after he took like that shit that's gonna strong enough to kill twenty men. He basically dies two seconds after he realizes she's alive, and it's the worst fucking thing ever. But and anyway, what's really cool is they go to Cuba. <laughs> yeah, they went to Cuba. Yep. Not Romeo and Juliet, but no, but Black Tom and Tom yeah. and um, yeah, Lizzie. Tom and Lizzie, and and uh, still, you know, Red is is fucking shit up, and I I honestly. Um, I, I, it was weird because Red didn't know. Well, Red didn't know, but it's it's still what I said. I said that that woman, yeah, his, um, his handler or not his handler, the, uh, his fixer. Yeah, he she fixes the problems and takes care of dead bodies. And, yeah, and, but Katie, she, 
I, I think. Kate. Yeah, cool. Something like she, that. She um she basically did exactly what I thought she did. You know, you know, was worried about Red uh becoming some somebody who was going to have an effect on their child's life, who was putting their 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 child's life in danger. So she went to the extent of kind of going behind his back and making sure that they got to a safe place, which in the end was not a safe place because, no, because she didn't, they got tracked by they got tracked by Robert Kirkman right. or not Robert Kirkman. That's the guy's <laughs> name. Kirk. By Robert Kirkman. His name is Kirk. Yeah, thank you, uh, Kirk. <laughs> yeah, Robert Kirkman from The Walking Dead. Followed them. Um, <laughs> that's in the next season. The Blacklist and The Walking Dead collide. Dude, you watch um, this show. No, I... How I, am I telling no, you? No, his name was Nathan Kirk. I'm so, what was Kirk Kirkman? Nathan Kirk? Jesus Christ, give me a break. So anyway, we're talking around so many names. Anyway, um, yeah, Nathan, uh, you know, Nathan Kirk or whatever his name was, they, they tracked where they were going and, and found them and, and so forth. And it, it kind of ended on, of course, a cliffhanger where you don't necessarily know what happened to Tom. He's apparently got a, a spinoff coming with Famke Jansen. Where you know he got knocked in the head with a gun. That's the last you know episode. You see, you don't know what happens to him. You see the baby's missing. You see that Lizzie's gone. Uh, and at the end of the episode, uh, you're gonna find out something. Uh, Kirk actually said to Lizzie, "I am your father." So it is not James Spader, which I've been telling you the whole time. So now we know who her father is. Do we, you though? No, it is because it, it would have made look. It, look, it makes no sense. For them to not know by now that Red Reddington is not her father. Because they have his DNA. They have her DNA. They would have known by now that there was this connection. Did he say, did he say I am your father? Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. He said, yeah. I am your father. And, so, then she, and then she was like, no! Well, no. She, didn't, she just kind of like didn't it's say not anything. not true. <laughs> she didn't say anything. That's she just, impossible! She looked surprised. <laughs> And still had her arm. <laughs> and so, so, so um, and she wasn't about to die in like this massive hangar with like where she could yeah. plummet to her death. She was in a chair safely in a, some <laughs> weird room. Uh, so not safely. But anyway, um, that, you know, the end of the blacklist, not surprising to me because like I said, I called it. Um, I think that they brushed over Lizzie's death way too uh, nonchalantly. Like, oh, one of the main characters is dead. Let's just have her funeral. And I'm like... The, the, when someone dies and there's a major death where that actress is, excuse me, is not coming back, then you're going to have something along the lines of Dexter. Dexter, the fourth season, where Trinity is the killer. And at the end of the fourth season, spoiler alert, sorry, the, season's, the series is over. The main character, Dexter's like wife, ends up getting murdered by Trinity. And you find out that he had killed her before Dexter actually got to him. So he comes home and finds her in a bathtub dead. And she like bled out in the bathtub, right? The same kind of mm. death he's been doing. And that actress came on like two days later and talked about the death and how she felt about it and the character and, and how she felt about, you know, her not being part of the series anymore. You didn't hear from this girl at all. And I'm like, she's not dead. And her name is still in the credits. I'm like, she's definitely still a part of this show. There's no way they would have cut her out without us having some kind of interview about her. We know she's pregnant, but that doesn't mean she's dead. You know, so. Um, it's one of the problems with, I think that's one of the problems with the uh, the access to information that we have. Yeah, you can kind of predict whether or not. Right. Like, that, mean, was, like, that was one hint, but among others. No, so. but I, I think that hint is a huge hint. And I think you're absolutely right. Like if I was following this show. Like that would be the first thing that I would be looking up is like, hey, where's where's this actress's reaction? And and if this actor isn't giving me a reaction, then he's probably not dead or she's probably not dead. Right. Mm. Um, because you're absolutely right. Like the night of that episode or a day later, you've got every, you've got headlines everywhere. You've got, you know, her showing up on talk shows. Uh, you got to you know, looking at what our next project's going to be. Uh, you know, you know what's happening five years from now. But right. I mean, if we didn't have access to this information, like you'd still kind of be scratching your head and saying, no, she can't be dead. But you wouldn't have anything that was like really hardcore evidence. You know, right, what I mean? but, right. but I think that's hardcore evidence that she wasn't showing up in the media anywhere. That's definitely, you know, that that's not even like a thing that makes you go, hmm, it's like, OK, they're not dead. It's just everything's going to be OK. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's written and 
I kind of, I guess, in a sense, it's like a spoiler if you really look that yeah. deep. But there are people out there that are like that I've talked to that watch the show. They're like, "Oh, dude, of course she's dead. She was in the coffin." I'm like, "Dude, it's there's so many ways. Like, dude, everything that this guy has done over the course of the show doesn't give you a hint that that shit yeah. might not be real." Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, come on, no, she's in a coffin. No, uh, did, did did you see the body? No, you know, like you I'm go. telling you, man, it's just I I think that uh, they did a really good Nick job. Nick Fury's dead too. Yeah, of course he is. They they did a lot of they did a lot of great things to to you know to make this death seem as real as possible. Some people fell for it. I was not one of them, but you know, hey, uh, props props to you know the NBC and the blacklist for making some people fall for it. I, I thought it was it was brilliant the way that they did it. But uh, I went to school for theater, and uh, Romeo and Juliet was like obviously the biggest classic. So that's kind of what I thought happened, um, and it did. So you know, hey, th- there you go. Um, as far as um, as far as what's to come next season, who knows? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing where the blacklist goes. I think it's a great show, and I think it's got a, a potential to keep going now that Lizzie is back in the picture because that is the only reason why James Spader is part of this franchise. Um, so um, I do want to touch upon another franchise that um, has come to fruition to for me personally. Um, you and I watched this before we started recording today because I was away last week when it premiered, which was the Assassin's Creed trailer ah. uh, starring uh, the, the mega talented Michael Fassbender. What did you think of the trailer not being a fan of the game or not playing one who plays the game? OK, so I mean, not being a fan of the game, not being one who plays the game. I had no idea what to expect. I thought it looked like it had some pretty good action. Um, I found it weird that, you know, you're in like, you know, the uh the, the Spanish Inquisition, and mm-hmm. they're playing friggin' Kanye West. Uh, yeah, that was a little weird. It was a little weird. Yeah. I mean, but I am God. God is shut up, Kanye. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, like, yeah it's like it was. It really felt like a commercial for the next Assassin's Creed Thank game. Thank you. Um, which, if it was the next Assassin's Creed game, looked pretty dope. Looked pretty awesome. Yeah. But I mean, the fact that they had that music playing over over it, it really felt like a commercial. It felt like, you know. And it was a commercial, but you know it felt it like did? a commercial for a game. You know what it did, though? When that music played, it took me right out of the time period. Exactly. You know, like, I feel like I'm watching a trailer instead of actually, oh, this is the Spanish Inquisition. Can we, can I think I'm in that time for a second? I mean, that and the fact that Ubisoft had their logo all over the front of the, the trailer. Well, that was just um, at the beginning, though. Well, yeah, I mean, but I mean, it was like, I felt like it was just Ubisoft. Well, well, yeah, but I mean, dude, they're a major. They're the you. They they created the game. Sure, Their logo that's should great. be the beginning. That's great. I don't think it should because they're not a movie studio. But they, you have to, you have to pay the rights to have that that you, that Assassin's Creed name in the. You know what I mean? You that's that's their company. That's like that's like uh, I don't know, man. Like any any movie, any uh, that, that's like when um. Uh, Mortal Kombat got the Predator and shit. They put the, some of the logos up there, you know, for that. They had to because it's your pain for the rights. For well, yeah, it. but I mean, what about the Mortal Kombat movie? Yeah, what about it? We didn't see. But that's because they those, those characters were not in the movie. They yeah, was we all... didn't see Nether Realm Studios. Nether Realm Studios wasn't a thing when the movie came out. Nether Realm Studios was something that came out. So after it was just that WB. Movie. No, so Nether Realm Studios what was the name of the company after that company was not even around when no, that so movie who, was released. Midway, right? Midway. I think it was Midway. Yeah, Midway but, published it. So why wasn't Midway's logo all over that? I don't remember it. But that's it, what I'm if, saying. If, if like I'm I mean, saying. back in the day, you didn't have all these like logos. All I feel like somebody's grandfather right now. But you didn't have all these logos <laughs> all over the place. Right? I don't know. I think you could just give. I think you had to give respect to where respect is due. That's all. right. But it felt like put it at the end of the movie. Yeah. All right. Right. It felt like. It felt like a video game commercial, is what I'm saying. All right, but let's and be the realistic. Reason why, they want to put their name out there because millions of views on YouTube. That's why. Right, but the reason why it felt like a video game commercial is because you had a video game developer logo yeah. at the beginning, followed by a commercial that had a, a hip-hop artist mm-hmm. rapping over something that was clearly set in the period of the Spanish Inquisition, which is it just it felt like sensationalism, right? And it wasn't... All right. Well, we'll take that shit out of that. <laughs> what did you think of the, the trailer, though? Take I thought it looked it. like an Assassin's Creed game, game commercial. Yeah, okay. and, and and I'm not into the Assassin's Creed game, so yeah. I'm not saying I'm not going to be into the movie. I'm just saying that the the trailer didn't grab me like it grabbed you because you are an Assassin's Creed fan. I mean, you've played through all of the games, all the games. Yeah, so I have for not. me, all right, like so I've, 
So Black Flag is like the only thing that I've done, and I only went halfway <sighs> through that. Well, I will say this. I, I being a, a fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise, loved it. I think Michael Fassbender is perfect. Um, I think that the action looks great. I think the costumes look great. I love the leap of faith at the end. I can't wait to see how that ends up because obviously no one lands in a barrel of hay and survives. So I want to see how that works out in the movie <laughs> realm. But uh, other, th- <laughs> other than that, um, the only problem I did have with it, um, yes, number one, Kanye, like just – just don't do music anymore. Uh, number two, um, I definitely did not. I'm not a fan of him being attached to this huge mechanical arm that is now considered to be the animus where it picks him up. And he does like he's basically fighting in his mind, but physically doing all this shit. I like the animus where you lay down in like this thing and it comes over your head. And then that transports you back to this past of yours where you get become your ancestors and get this company, uh, you know, the, the, the answers they want. I, I think that that makes more sense. Um, why they chose to go this way, probably to make it a little bit more interesting to what his body, physical body was doing while he's in the NS. People probably want to see that shit. Um, great. Um, I think um, I, I just I, I'm really excited for this because I don't think Michael Fassbender does anything that is a piece of shit. And this movie is getting a lot of hits on YouTube and a lot of praise and or the trailer rather. And people are really uh, excited to see it. So, I mean, um, I did post some stuff on Red Beard Podcast Twitter where there's some uh, some stills and some photos that were taken from the set that uh, were were uh, released. Um, not everywhere, but if you check our Twitter, you'll be able to see them. So so take a look at that. Um, I'll post more stuff as things develop. Um but yeah, with that being said, I mean, you didn't necessarily care for the trailer, but are interested in the movie. That's good, though. At least you're yeah. interested in the movie. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm not writing it off because I know that the trailer misrepresents what the movie is going to be. Like, I mean, I feel like the movie is going to be a little bit deeper than what we got. Like, oh, yeah. You I know, mean, of course. Um, and, and I'm interested in seeing where they go with it. And, and, you know, I'm just not I'm not passing judgment at all yet because I know that the trailer is geared towards attracting the video game fans right 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 um but that said i mean you saw civil war finally yes i saw civil and war two days ago yeah sick i want you to uh just let it all out man don't don't hold anything uh, back i just want you to let it out and and uh that way you can move forward in life without holding that <laughs> in life that all right in. Yeah. All right, so that sigh, that sigh was not a sigh of disappointment. It was a sigh of like, holy shit, so many good stuff. What do I talk about? Um, props to Tom Holland for just being an awesome Spider-Man. Like, I thought he kicked ass. I Amen. really, I really like his interpretation of Peter Parker. I think that it was um, like, all right, let's 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 give it up to Tobey Maguire though, because Tobey Maguire like basically rejuvenated the character of Spider-Man in Peter Parker. And I think he oh, did a great job. But that's the thing. He didn't really rejuvenate him. I mean, in this, he, he was, he's basically, a, he's basically Spider-Man's Michael Keaton. Yeah, but he's, but, yeah, but he's, he's what I think people wanted Spider-Man. He had that nerdy kind of like thing. I thought he it would work. I didn't hate it. Yeah, I thought it was great. I, I really enjoyed him as, as uh, Peter Parker. But however, Tom Holland had like this nervousness to him. Yes. That really just like, did well for me in the trailer. I really liked uh, how that came across. It, you know, it was just, it was perfect. And he was just kind of like stumbling over himself, you know, and, mm-hmm. I, and I liked that. And I liked the fact that he was really nervous by Tony Stark, you know, when they finally came together. Yeah. And there's been interviews out there where I guess Tom Holland said that like RDJ like terrified him when they were on the set together. <laughs> like, you know, I think so. Some of that nervousness actually was true. Um, but I think they did a great job and, and, uh, also, uh, congratulations to Marvel Studios for picking like uh, making Aunt May like super hot. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, seriously, man, Marissa Tomei. Like, I'm into that. You know? Yeah, like that was know, cool. One of the coolest things about that is like for a long time, I was I always said it's Aunt May, not Grandma May. Like, what is yeah. the deal with Aunt May being like ninety? Ninety, exactly. Yeah. Like, I didn't understand it. For the longest time, like my aunts have never been that old. Um, I did have an old aunt, yeah. but it wasn't like it wasn't like that was the stereotypical aunt. Like that wasn't the aunt that you think of when somebody says, "Hey, 
we're gonna we're gonna go to your aunt's house today. It's, it was always the fun young, you know, like aunt that always you know broke the rules for you. Uh, yeah, the sister of your mother. Yeah, <laughs> who's not like necessarily wicked old. Yeah, exactly. Um, not the mother of my mother, the sister of my yeah. mother. Yeah, right. I mean, so I think that uh, that was that was cool. I I really um, yeah. So great Spider Man. I really like how um, you know Iron Man at one part or Tony Stark is like. Okay, time for you to go home, <laughs> or, or I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna tell Aunt May. Right. You know, and I thought that was cool because it's like you know, even though like he killed it as Spider Man and really did help the team out, um, it was time for him to kind of like go home because he's still a kid. Yeah. So they 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 made that uh, real. I also like um, the fact that you know he was able to overpower like these Avengers, you know, in some respects, you know, like uh, you know, holding them down with the the web and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. Um, I really liked uh, the Black Panther. I thought that was a great new character to have in the Marvel Universe um, and bring into the films. I thought that um, they did everything pretty pretty seamlessly. Like it didn't seem like he just came out of nowhere. You know, it seemed like he. Um, I like the backstory that they gave him in the film mm-hmm. and why he became involved. Um, I thought the guy who played uh, Bucky was great too. Um, I mean, all these new characters, even though we had like three new characters, you know, we had Bucky, we had um, the Black Panther, we had Spider-Man, like um, they were they were in the film, but it didn't seem too congested. Right. They all worked well together. And I had completely forgot about this guy. I'd seen it in the trailer. And then when he popped out of the van, I was like, oh, that's right. Paul Rudd fucking Ant-Man's in this, you know, like and he he just added like the comedy to it, you know, as Paul Rudd would. I love where he like went up. He's like, oh, like Captain America. He's like, sir. And then he like grabbed him in his arms. He's like, whoa. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, no, like, my favorite line from him was uh, was when he turns around and he looks at uh, Scarlet Witch and he's like, I know you too. You're great. Yeah. <laughs> and he just turns back yeah. around and he's like looking at Cap again. Yeah. And I, then go ahead, he's go like, uh, he's like, I think this shield, this is your shield, Captain America. <laughs> like he's like, oh, yeah, this guy, this guy was awesome. He was great. I I just think that overall, I mean, it was it was action packed. It was Avenger action. You know, I mean, you're going into a, a, a Captain America Civil War, you know, movie, and it's not Captain America. It was the Avengers. You know, and 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 I it was great. And, and um, I don't know. I mean, I I think it's definitely um, one of the better. Um, I mean, all it's funny because all the Marvel movies are great, but this one really did stand out to me. Right. You know, it really did. It, 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 I think it blew the other two Captain Americas out of the water, but I think that's because it had all these characters involved. And as the, the Marvel Universe grows and expands and, and uh, becomes this, you know, legit universe, we're going to get to see all of our favorite characters come together and work together. You know, it's at that point now where it's not just a Captain America movie or a Hulk movie. It's an Avengers movie almost every time. Right. You know, um, but I, I like the fact that it wasn't all the Avengers. Like, we didn't have the Hulk. We didn't have Thor. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, we were able to still have a great movie without having all of them to come together and having the Hulk just, like, destroy every fucking thing in his path. Right. You know, um, and without bringing in Thor's hammer. You know, I thought it was great to have just these characters, you know, um, protecting what they thought was right and what they believed in. Right. And, and I like the fact that, you know, it, even though it's Captain America versus technically Iron Man, you don't, you don't really side with anybody. You, you, they put you in a position where you understand the perspectives of either character. Like you can see Captain America's point, you can see Iron Man's point. So yep. there isn't really a a point in the movie where I was like, I want this guy to win. Like I was kind of like, let's just see how this goes down. Yeah, because I was, was on both a, sides. It was such a good like, it was such a good argument. It really was. Like it, it was, was like excellent. It like, look, I'm going to take this back about a month. And ask you now that you've seen this, mm-hmm. can you see what I was talking about with Batman v Superman? Yeah, like as far as like the whole idea of you know why they started fighting, how they stopped fighting, all that stuff. Like if you look at that and then you take that and you compare it to this, even without the history that you have with these characters, just the storyline that they used and the the amount of effort that went into making something that was actually debatable, right? Mm-hmm. 
something that you could actually invest yourself in and, and like you you have to like really think about like wow like what would I do in that situation um, the fact that they did that and crafted something that actually emotionally invests you in that film in that fight um, dude hats off to the directors and the writers for that movie and, and making a superhero battle like make sense no I really did you know? and, and I like the fact that they even though they fought, there's still a at the end of the movie, you know, where he's reading that that letter that Cap sent to him. You you know that he's he's still pissed about some of the things that were kept from him, but at the same time, still respects him. Yeah, and I like that they didn't lose that respect for each other. Like they understand why they fought, and you know they're gonna like squash it. Oh, I love you that. know, and I, love I and, that. and I like the fact that like you know you knew that that Captain America and uh, Iron Man weren't going to kill each other. You know what I mean? You know it was going to come to a point where they wouldn't have gone that far. Mm -hmm. But I liked the point where you actually saw both of them get, like, pretty badly injured. Yeah. You know, like, and I like the fact that, like, he could have totally, like, smashed his head off with a shield, but he took out, like, you know, the... The power source. The power source. Yeah. And I thought that was good. And then he's just, like, a guy in a suit of metal. Oh, it was great. Um, like, when he's laying there and he's defeated and he's like, it's not your shield. Yeah, and he just leaves doesn't it. belong to you. My father you know? made it. Yeah. yeah, that's like that was so cool. And like when he just drops it and leaves it there, it's like, like that stuff that actually that's like like I said, man, it's a love letter to comic book fans, man. Mm. Like it, it was it was a love letter to my soul. I love that movie. Um, like it's my favorite one besides Guardians because Guardians is definitely still on top. Yeah, because it's special. I didn't expect it. Yeah, I mean, you know? I, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely. I expected this to be great. I didn't expect Guardians, Guardians to blow me to, away to like blow it you did. Away. Um, I, I thought that I thought that this movie uh, definitely um, upped the ante for a lot of a lot of Marvel movies to come. I mean, when you do a movie that's this good, I mean, it's it's only got to get better. Right. And I think that um, I really liked Vision's part in all this. You know, especially yeah. when it, especially now that he kind of uh, took out a buddy there by accident. You know what I mean? Dude, him. In like a a, a a sweater and and like khakis or whatever, like that shit was funny. You know what? That's it was really, awesome. You know what it was though? Yeah, I thought it was funny, but it was also like, oh, it's Paul Bettany. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you know what I mean? Like that's what Paul Bettany dresses like. You know, I, mean, I didn't yeah. really see Vision at some points, but it was I, awesome, and I love that he was like trying to cook and. Like when he actually gave her the food, I can't he's like, eat. <laughs> "Yeah, I've never eaten anything." So, <laughs> you know what you know? I did think was funny though? I, I, well, not funny, but I thought was really cool was when um, what's his what's uh what's his name? The guy that went down, uh, uh Rhodey. Yeah, but what's the actor's name? Uh, Don Cheadle. Thank you, Don Cheadle's character. Don Cheadle. I thought he did a great job, but I also um really like the ending where he was like, you know, I could have taken a fall. Um, numerous times for this is I could have gone down in a bad way, and even though I did take a pretty bad fall, it I understand why it happened. Like he wasn't, yeah. he was accepting that. Like I've been flying this many times and getting into this dangerous amount of shit. Like something like this was bound to happen, and it did happen. But I get why it happened. Like yeah. he wasn't. He's not like. It's he didn't not, change his mind. Yeah, it's not like this. It doesn't become the story of revenge now. Right. You know, he just understood why it happened and, and was accepting the consequences because he put himself in that situation. You know, yeah. um, I thought that was really cool. I, I, I definitely I thought that was just a great moment uh, for his character. Um, and I think the only thing that I was like, that's kind of weird, was when he finds out when Captain America finds out that like Peggy died, but then he like gets with her like niece or some shit. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, like they're both getting with Captain America. All right. That's a little weird. Yeah. No, that, and believe it or not, that has been a thing in the comics. Cause he doesn't age. Yeah. So now I guess it's her turn. Yeah. Sharon Carter. <laughs> I, guess, I don't know. Peggy Carter was a, a love interest of his in, you know, his, his heyday and Sharon Carter is his love interest in present day. And we've and comic book fans the world over have always been scratching their head at that one. Like, wow, that's keeping in the family, right? Like, yeah, seriously, you know? right? but, yeah. um, but they carried that over into the movie and that was actually pretty cool. Yeah. I was a little, I was like, wait, so that, 
I was like, yeah, it is though. Like, you know, I was like, yeah. all right, wow. All right, cool. That's, we're going to do this. But I mean, <laughs> that's, Hey, you know, she's dead. So whatever. But, um, I don't know. I, I thought I thought overall it was a A plus movie. I thought Marvel killed it again. Uh, did a great job. Uh, I mean, dude, there's so much more stuff like to come with Marvel. This is uh, this company is just blowing up, dude. All that we just talked about, you haven't even mentioned the Black Panther yet. Well, I, well, yeah, all right. I didn't mention he was he was he made. I thought that he had a reason to be. I thought, I thought, um, yeah, the Black Panther was was great. I I. The only thing I wanted out of the Black Panther was I wanted the Black Panther part of this person, this character, to be a little bit more vicious. You know what I mean? I thought he was going to be a little bit more hardcore, but um, he still was. I mean, he still put up, you know, the fights and the claws come out. Uh, but I, I thought the actor who played him is, a, I think he's a great actor. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, he's done a lot of great stuff. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal, and I I can't wait to see where this character of the black panther goes rumor and at the end of the movie when they show the panther like cave yeah, in the middle that was of the awesome. jungle i'm like fuck yes yeah the rumor like, that is cool. that uh he's gonna be teaming up with bucky to take down baron zemo makes sense in the next film like we're supposed to get like a full-fledged like uh you know version of baron zemo because we only got like this guy in a you know, this guy that was running around trying to get revenge on the Avengers for, you know, killing his family or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was just a guy. Uh, but in the next, like, iteration, like, the next time we see him, it's going to be full-blown, you know, mask, you know, outfit, whatever. Um, you know, mercenary-looking guy that, that is going to be, like, kind of running shit. And him and, uh, I think, Ulysses Claw, the guy that uh, got his arm blown off by uh, Ultron. Okay, yeah. The arms dealer. He's actually going to he's actually going to be one of the villains. This is rumor, nothing confirmed, but that's the uh that's what we're hopefully we're hopeful for and we're expecting, you know, but if they change it, they change it, whatever, but it would be kind of cool. Yeah, man. I I I I'm really psyched to see where all these characters go. I I like three new characters was uh awesome and and Spider-Man's obviously going to be a big part of this now too. So, uh yeah. I'm looking to see um where that goes too, and I, I like I said to you earlier, I liked it. Um, he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's really." <laughs> he's, he's jumping around in like a onesie or something, yeah. and then he's like, "He's like, it's not a onesie." And then he's like, "You need some upgrades," and I'm like, "Oh, that's so badass! He's gonna build him a costume, dude." It, it um, made me smile, man. When uh, when Cap was just like, I, I forget exactly the exact words, but it was like, "Oh, you got Moxie, kid. Where you from?" And he's like, "You know, oh Queens." Yeah, and he's like Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. So- <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. Like that. Like I smiled. Like I was like, oh, that was such a fucking good moment, man. Yeah. Like, and I like how they're gonna they're they're bringing him in in a way where he's gonna be, you know, the next movie's gonna be like, hey guys, like, sorry about all that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, glad to be a part of the team. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, um, I was this guy from uh, <laughs> was this guy from Brooklyn. <laughs> His friend was huge. Hey, I yeah. mean, huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it was. It, it was definitely, um, oh my God, so good. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, one more thing I want to jump on. Uh, you definitely mentioned and me talking about Spider Man is uh, Michael Keaton is going to be jumping in on this. So well, hopefully they're still in negotiations. Yeah, but I, I mean, yeah. Well, that's true. Negotiations were happening for Beetlejuice, and apparently that's not happening. But yeah, they uh, they started negotiating with him a while ago, and then he dropped out. Yeah, it was just like he was kind of you know done with negotiating. But apparently he's back in uh, negotiations with Marvel Studios to play the the main villain of the movie, which not sure who else he could play besides Norman Osborn, which would be awesome. Um, and he, I would love to see him as a villain. He's a good villain in movies. Like, yeah. I've seen him in a couple of things. I mean, um, I think he would be a waste on anything but Norman. Yeah, I, I agree with you as on much that. As, as much as people don't want to see another Green Goblin, I mean, I think we haven't really seen the Green Goblin yet like the real Green Goblin, we've seen these facsimiles, just like we haven't seen the real Spider-Man until we saw him in Civil War. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't know, though. I mean, you really don't think that... I mean, because you don't really think that, like, that was the real Spider-Man? Like, no. Nope. Why? Why? I think that it was a good facsimile, and it was enough for fans to go to the movie and be happy. Yeah. But it wasn't the actual... This is the first time we've actually seen the comic book Spider-Man. In, in a movie, okay, we've All seen right. we've seen a we've seen a good attempt at it, 
but we haven't seen it made and produced by people who actually love the character. Like, I mean, this guy, like this Spider-Man had like the one that we've seen already as, has, you know, by bi- bio organic web shooters that grew out of his hands. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he didn't like make any, like this kid is a genius, you know, in, in civil war, like he's going around and he's like, you know, digging stuff up out of like, you know, the garbage and shit and taking it home, taking it apart, using the insides and like creating different things. Uh, he created his own web formula where in the movies it's like, you know, the first one, it was like, you know, a mutation from being bitten by the spider. And the second one with uh, Andrew Garfield, he, he finds his father's formula and adapts it. But in this one, he truly created it himself. Okay. Right. And we finally get this sense of him being this kid genius that could rival Stark. You know what I mean? Uh, in the future, as he's getting older, um, these this is part of what I'm talking about, like him being a kid, uh, a 15 or 16 year old that's, uh, you know, in high school and afraid of missing homework. Um, a kid who, you know, most likely doesn't have a girlfriend and is going to have this awkward relationship with somebody down the line that we can look forward to where he's, you know, trying to be Spider-Man and also trying to be on time for a date. Uh, Like these are things that we can really, you know, see as the Peter Parker that we grew up loving in the comics where the one in in the movies, the, the best movie has been um, the first in the first series, the second movie, uh, Spider-Man two, um, with Doc Ock because and I feel like that was like the best villain that we got on screen like ever um, mm-hmm. was Dr. Octopus but still at the same time we're following this Peter Parker that's already out of high school and in college right and you know lands Mary Jane as a girlfriend and you know they seem to like kind of just get along and there's no like you know this weird thing about oh you're late for a date again I'm gonna break up with you you know what I mean like we like these are things that I'm looking forward to in Homecoming which I mean I'm hoping that we get but Villain wise, I mean, aside from Doc Ock, we haven't really had him fight a really good villain, um, and I'm hoping that this is going to be the um, the Norman Osborn Green Goblin that we've been hoping for. Okay, all right, I can see that. I can respect that. Um, I, I if Michael Keaton does become a part of this franchise, um, I think that a lot of people know him as Batman and they know him as like a good guy, mm-hmm. but. Um, if you guys want to see him in a really good movie where he plays a good villain, uh, check out. It's a 1998 movie called Desperate Measures with him and Andy Garcia. And he's actually in a – he's a prisoner, and Andy Garcia finds out that – well, his son is very sick, and he finds out that Michael Keaton's or this character's uh, has the same um, blood type as his son. Right. So he tries to have him basically paired with his son so his son can survive and, like – he tries to like basically break out of prison during this whole thing. And it's like, and he's a really good villain. So if you guys are wondering if Michael Keaton can pull off a villain, like then don't, Oh, I know he can don't. But first for those people who don't like, do not worry. He is fucking terrifying as a villain. He's excellent actor. But there was so, also uh, the, uh, what was the, the movie where he was, uh, like a tenant in a, yeah. In a house. And like, yeah. yeah. That was another one where he was fucking creepy. As what was, shit. what was the name of that movie? Do I remember? don't remember, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He like, yeah, he was like lived in like the attic or some shit or the basement or I forgot where it was, but yeah, he was like the, the neighbor or something. Um, I'd have to find out the movie of that. It was, um, shit, man. Um, while you're looking that up though, like he, the reason why I want to see him as Norman is because if it's going to be a villain, I mean, I can't think of another villain that has that, that Pacific Heights. Yes. Yeah. Pacific Heights. I can't think of another villain that has that creep factor while still being a, a relatively likable person. Yeah. Like, cause he could be, he can play that line where he's both. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really, it's, it's cool. It's cool. And I think it would be awesome. Definitely. Um, also in, in casting news, uh, Goldblum's going to be in the, uh, Oh shit. Jim. The Thor movie. Jeff Goldblum. Hey, yeah, uh, apartments.com. So. <laughs> um, it's, take them take take down. Do yeah. your stuff. No, dude, it's, it's kind of cool shit. Um, I love Jeff Goldblum. I'm glad he's coming back. Yeah, there's no, uh, I don't, he's going to play uh, a character called the Grandmaster. Okay. And uh, Carl Urban is going to be in it too. Uh, he's going to play Scourge. Oh, shit. All right. Um, and Kate Blanchett, they finally announced who she's going to be. She's going to be the uh, goddess Hela, oh, who's no basically way. the yeah, basically the uh, queen of the underworld. 
All right, I could see. I like Kane play chat. She's awesome. Yeah, so that's that's going to be pretty friggin' cool. Um, Tessa Thompson. I don't know who that is. Do you know who she is? Ah, uh, man, that sounds familiar. Tessa Thompson. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll, I would know who she was if I saw her. But um, Tessa Thompson's also going to be in it. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see, Tessa Thompson. Oh yeah, she's been in some stuff. Um, she's going to play Valkyrie. The uh, you know, well, the, she was in uh, like Selma, and she was in uh, Creed too. She was the she was the chick in Creed, his love interest. Oh, was she? Yeah, that was her. Uh, but she had like dreads and stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely one of those um, one of those actresses that has kind of she's she's just kind of come out of um, nowhere. I think. I mean, she's done some stuff, but if you don't notice her you don't really see her face all the time you're not going to know that it's her i mean it, like if you don't if you're not familiar with her as an actress you might not she's she's very good at actually like she has a different look in every movie so like in creed she's kind of got dreads and selma she looked completely different um if you look at her headshot obviously she looks different so um she's good at kind of be hiding in plain sight so to speak um but a great actress i thought she did a great job in creed um if you guys haven't seen Creed, check it out. Um, it's one of those movies that, even though it got really good reviews but didn't get any Oscar nominations, it's still kind of, I feel like, gone a little under the radar. Um, check it out. Creed was, was phenomenal. Um, I can't really think of another movie that I I really think should have gotten some uh, a little bit more respect at the Oscars but just didn't. Um, you know, Sylvester Stallone won the SAG Award and the Golden Globe and then got... Uh, fucked uh, at the Oscars, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so either way, um, she's she's actually going to play Valkyrie, though, who is the uh, basically the, I guess the Norse god version of a banshee or 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 Charon, the the, you know, the boatsman that takes you to across the river Styx to you know the underworld. Uh, okay. She's basically the Nordic, the Norse god version of that. That she like flies in on a winged horse and you know collects your soul and brings you to Valhalla. Uh, that's her. That's going to be her role. So it's going to be interesting to see if she has a major part in the film. Like if she's actually mm-hmm. going to be like you know like somebody who's fighting with Thor and Hulk, or if she's just going to show up and be like you know like I don't a, a feel small like, bit role. I don't feel like they would do that though. I feel like I feel like she she might she's probably going to have some bigger part. Mm-hmm. You know that than that, um, but then again, like, um, what's his name? Um, God, the guy who's uh, who's rumored to play James Bond, the black guy. Oh yeah, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Uh, he was in Thor as like the Guardian. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he, now he's like blown up. <laughs> so yeah, and he's like mad that he has to like still do movies for Marvel. Yeah, whatever. They'll make his character bigger. I think they need to. I yeah. mean, like it's a waste, and I'm I'm sure that's why he feels like, you know, what the hell? Yeah. I'm I'm so mad that I still have to do these movies because he has to get into all that gear and makeup and all that stuff just to get on screen for like five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. I. I honestly think that um, I think he's a great actor. I, I can't see him being in another Marvel movie. And then you will him. believe that a Norse god could be black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that they will not give him a bigger role um, for the next movie that he's in. Also, um, just to kind of finish up with this, um, I did see the Jungle Book. Um, yes. Yeah. I saw it. Um, it was so good. I did. I saw it um, when I when, I, when we got back from the cruise. We had to be at the air. We were at the airport for like ten, but we didn't have a flight until like five. Yep, five thirty. So and the airport had a theater. No, no, we Ubered ten minutes away to a theater. So right. Jungle Book, and then came back. And I loved it, man. I thought it was great. I thought Idris Elba's was great as uh, Shere Khan. Oh, it's so awesome. Um, he was he perfect was creepy for that. as hell when he, he was, was like talking to the Cubs. Oh yeah, and telling them the story. You know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of that scene in Gladiator where the Emperor's talking about the busy little bees but he's talking to his sister. Yeah. Like that was creepy as shit. I also thought that Walken was perfect as King Louis. Right. You know. <laughs> I have the ears that have the ears. Like, <laughs> it's just like Christopher Walken he's such a G and then he's singing his song Wanna Be You. So, but, uh, but um, no he was, he was great. No it was straight I, I up the red flower. Dude it was so, straight up like King of New York. Oh yeah he was. Yeah, yeah. King of New York such a good movie. Um 
No, I, I thought he was perfect for that. I thought that Bill Murray was perfect for uh, right. For oh god, I wasn't. So I didn't know what to expect with him as Baloo because oh, I'm so used to the John so Goodman good version. I think he was better than John Goodman. Yeah, he was great, man. His voice is just so Bill Murray. It's so friendly. Like, hey, yep. I need that honey. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> and I I loved. Uh, um, oh god, I, I go blank on names all the time, man. Who's the guy who played the Panther? Oh, Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley. I yeah. love ben. I love my favorite part. He was like, I don't eat honey. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was great. Yeah. Um, Bears don't hibernate in the jungle. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. What um, are you teaching him? <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought um, – I just thought the whole movie was phenomenal. And I thought the, the – you know, the CGI in this movie was outstanding. I thought that the kid who played um, – Look Mowgli just was like him. Like, yeah, I mean, the guy, played, the kid who played Mowgli was was great. He wasn't like a shitty kid actor. He did no. a really good job. Uh, you know, considering the fact that he was acting with nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's one thing to act with actual people, but like to be acting with nobody around you. Well, I'm sure there were people in like motion capture suits or something oh, like yeah, that. Of course, yeah. But right. uh, but to be acting with nobody. Yeah. It and, was and pretending that you're looking up at something or you know, scared of something or reacting to something that's happening or branch falling, like nailed it, nailed, nailed it. 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 It just all around was a great storyline. Um, the snake was creepy as shit. Yeah. Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson was, was awesome. awesome. The, the part that freaked me out was when she's like, just, and you see the mouth open up. I'm like, oh shit. When it was yeah. like going to eat him for a second. But then, right. you know, the, something came out and I think Baloo came out and like saved his ass. Yes. Um, it was it was great, man. So check out Jungle Book uh, if you haven't seen it, and if you guys haven't seen Civil War, well, you just saw it by listening to the podcast. <laughs> so, but uh, no, there was so much more to the movie. Yeah, than what there, we talked there is. About. Yeah, but we it's two a ton it's of two shit. hours and forty five minutes. So I mean, they, we didn't give everything away. Absolutely no, not. Of course not. Just the stuff you already knew about mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, Black that's Panther's true. in there. Spider Man's in there. We may have talked about a couple of scenes, but really, we didn't spoil anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, uh, that does it this week for the Red Beard Podcast, guys. Um, I'm officially back, and, and uh, next week uh, we start on video. So, yeah. uh, so definitely, guys, we've been talking about video for a while, but uh, next week is our is going to be our beginning of video. So make sure you keep an eye out next week. So I guess next week is the beginning of video. Sure. Yeah. Well, we've been talking <laughs> about it long enough. We've been talking about it long enough. We 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 got it. We're, we're ready to go. Um, do this, son. Oh, well, we got it. Um, we got we got the stuff, we got the gear. Let's let's do it. So um, yeah, I know I got the gear said, like so long ago. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> I was getting married. <laughs> so anyway, um, anyway, guys, uh, keep checking us out on Twitter. Um, you know, some cons are coming soon. Uh, Walker Stalker in Boston's coming. We'll be there. Uh, we'll be at a lot of different places. So obviously, keep following Red Beard Podcast. Keep tweeting, retweeting, favoriting, uh, share it with your friends. Tell your friends. Uh, comment, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Absolutely. All right. Later. Peace.